have you in the gallery. Tell me a little bit about this show that's just about to go off. I've been uh, working on two, two different things. I've been working on still lives and I've been working on, on landscapes. And well, I live out in the country, the farming community of all places. And uh, so I'm always in the landscape and it is permeated me. So now I know how to do a tree, I know how to do a field and all this kind of stuff. Now time to see what else can I do with that. So you have that landscape in your mind, but you do not have a particular scene. Like it's not the, the picture perfect. And it says, what really is in there? So then you fool around with it and you come up with things. Well, you, you, reach, you reach a point and you can forget about your, what you have learned. And you can take, you can, you can start exploring, you can start freeing yourself. And some of the stuff will, will still work. You don't have to think about them. They just automatically happen. And so I've always been found, very fond of lines. And I like, I like to work with lines. And uh, at one point I would simply say, outline my work. But then I thought, well, why don't I make it really part of the art? So then I started literally scribbling. So do you scribbles? And then you look at it, say, well, now I need to put some color in there and some, you know, everything makes sense. And uh, this is the result. <laughs> I love the lines, but there's that fine point when a line becomes a shape. And I think shape and composition play such an important part. When you're saying such minimal things, they, they could come out so much. So tell me about how you evolve from the little sketches into the big works. Because that transition from little to big is sometimes a, a big step. <laughs> well, to put it simply, if I have little works, you use your hands and you do the lines like this. You say, the heck with that. You know, so then you, you, you take a big piece of paper and you do almost gestural things. You do not, you do not pre-plan. You just, you just do something, then you stop and you look at it. And you may want to, uh, you, you may say, okay, that's okay. It looks fine this way, I leave it this way. Well, it's not too bad, so then you start with the shapes, the forms or whatever. You put that on, put the color, and then you look at it again. And you said, mm, there is a hole over here. How do I fill it? What do I do there? So then you put, you put the lines in. And as you said, when you have uh, quite a number of them, uh, they, start, they start becoming shapes. Then you may have, for instance, you know, the, the one with the green in it on the, in that green stuff near the top, that, that squiggly up and down thing, will stand on its own. So, it, uh, yeah, if you feel the void, it's, it's... So Michelangelo says paintings are never done, they're abandoned. How do you know when to stop? Does the painting, I sort of say the painting looks back at you and says, I'm or does sometimes you have to let it grow on to you, like that discipline of leaving it before it's fully resolved and then recognizing it's resolved? Oh, uh, absolutely. You come to a point and you, 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 see, you said, I am stuck. You don't work on it at this point. You just put it aside and you may, you may well get back into it, you know, within, uh, within half an hour, but sometimes it would take several days before you, so you, I would put it unfinished on the wall, because my, in my studio, luckily enough, I have a blank wall that is the size of that one. Yeah. I can hang my work up there, see what it looks like. So I put it up there, I used, I used a, a, a 
some some flashing, a strip of flashing on the wall because all my work is on paper. And I put my my work up there, and I use magnets to hold it in place. Nice. <laughs> But anyway, so, so I look at it, and so every day I go into the studio and I see it, and then suddenly it clicks, oh yes, I need to do that. So you take it down, you do it. Never correct it. Yeah. If it does not work, chuck it, start over, do it alone. So you have lots and lots of sketchbooks with beautiful renderings from life, from visuals. Do you? look at them before you start your next series or is it really muscle memory and and memory that that you draw from it, it's a combination it's a combination like this one was more looking on how i did i did the uh, the scribbles in in the sketch but the sketch do represent the landscape or, or, or still life and you can you can see that quite clearly, and and uh, so then then you take that and you look at the, the landscape or whatever, and you said, oh, the way I did that, the way I worked that branch or or that field, this is pretty cool. Let's see what I can do with it. Yeah. And put it put it on there. So it's not just scribbles. There's a lot of gesture drawn from nature, gesture drawn from the still life. I love that about your work. So the colors that you choose, is it that big box of pastels that gets you inspired? Do you start with that? Or do you start from this memory of the motion that you want to draw from the landscape? Tough question. But but again, I, I, will, I will start with something I've seen in nature, as I said. I, uh, my property is that I've got the bush and I've got the open field and, and uh, you know, so you, and there are colors, but you have to look for them. So you, you get that, that color, maybe you have a, a sunset that's lighting up a tree a certain way, and you have that fleeing moment of, of an incredible, I don't know, orange or whatever it is, that stick in your head. So then you can you just go and dig it out. <laughs> you know? Because the older you get, the, you lose your memory and you can't remember them. <laughs> yeah, but they do come back. They do come back in little flashes, right? Yeah. So pastel, charcoal. This do you rub with your hands or do you use tortillions and chamois? They look I, so I, I'm, I'm going to tell you something yeah. you may not want to know, but I'll tell you anyway. <laughs> what? I have been, I have been uh, using up stuff that I had left over. So the one, two, three, four, no, one, one, two, three, four are a little one on the mylar. The original mylar. The original mylar. That's and a lovely living, surface to work on. Yes, and believe it or not, those are on my favorite paper that's no longer available, the grayish paper. Mm, yes, good old Edmonton. We're all sad we lost that. Grayish yeah, paper is lovely. It, it's a very forgiving paper. You can, you can water it, it doesn't buckle. You can, you can do fantastic things with it. It's, it's very uneven. Some is thick, some is thin, but, but it does work. And, uh, and so now I've got no more great paper, I've got no more, no more my Precious pieces indeed, Alberta landscape on Alberta made paper. Love it.